Hello, my name is Spencer Kimball. I'm a co-founder at Cockroach Labs and the author of the simulation you're about to see. I'm going to step through this simulation, provide some explanation. Joining me today is Jessica Edwards. Hello. I'm going here to uh, ask Spencer some questions about the simulation, have him walk us through it. Yeah, keep things moving along and keep them from begin, uh, becoming terminally boring. So, you might be wondering, Jessica, what we're looking at here. It looks like New York City. Well, indeed it is. In fact, this is to represent a facility in New York City, and uh, it contains a single node and a very small beginning cockroach cluster. So if we zoom up on it, you'll see that uh, it has certain properties. So if you hover around the outside edge, uh, you can see the distribution kind of as a pie chart of where data is stored in the database. This is a very simple simulated database of only four tables. Uh, they go from smallest registration to largest details. Over on the right side here, you can see the total amount of storage that this node can accommodate, 125 gigabytes. It's only 1% capacity used. There's a gauge here in green, which is the number of client requests per second, and there's a gauge in black, which is the network throughput per second. Down here is where things get a little more interesting. So you have the pie chart on the, uh, you know, in the original diagram here. This shows the same thing, these sets of boxes. Um, but they also show in considerably more detail what Cockroach does to both segment the data and replicate the data. So you can see that they're roughly proportional to the sizes that you saw in the pie chart. Details are the largest, registration is the smallest. Each of the horizontal segments, you can see there's eight of them in detail, six of them in orders. These represent what is called a range in Cockroach. So this is a partition of data. Um, you might wonder why there's three boxes vertically stacked. Yeah, so what's the difference between the, looks like white, or maybe it's empty, and then the box that's in color? Indeed, it is empty. The colored box shows that a replica exists on this particular node. Uh, the two empty boxes show that uh, there's no replica. We, we only put one replica on a node. Um, where Cockroach actually is happiest is if there's a replica, uh, three replicas across multiple nodes. So is CockroachDB happy right now, or is it in kind of a grumpy state because of all these empties? It will complain at you in the logs about being under-replicated because the default configuration is that it, it expects three replicas, but it only has one node. So yeah, it'll be a little bit unhappy. It'll work fine, just like a normal monolithic database. You have a single node. The big problem here is that you won't be happy if something happens to this node. And that's the beauty of Cockroach, that it actually will replicate and provide a high availability in the event of failure, or even something as mundane as just restarting a server, getting it rescheduled in AWS VM. Let's zoom back out here and take another look. So if we start the simulation, we zoom down in, you can see that there's one node in this facility which has the IP address internally of 1.1. Again, this is a simulation, so none, nothing, nothing should be taken too seriously. We can see there's activity now. We have uh, some number of client requests coming in per second. If we zoom up on this, you'll see that uh, these values are going up as clients write data into the database. So what do we have to do to uh, fill in those empty replicas? How do we create those empty replicas? We add nodes. So that's one of the great things about Cockroach. You just kind of add nodes. It's like adding water and watching things grow. So we will, in this case, add two nodes. Boom, we've got two nodes here. So we have now uh, dot two and dot three. There's two additional nodes in this uh, facility located somewhere in the New York City area. And what's happening right now, these dots, these circles that are moving down the network links, these are representing up replication traffic. So the original node has all of the original copies of the data. It's um, very happily now uh, transferring copies of the data it has to the two additional nodes so that now there's three replicas. Well, and you can see, I can even see the data or replicas traveling along to each. Yeah, they're traveling along and they're filling in. So, you know, over time, you'll see that uh, these are going to fill in all of the missing replicas. So the third replica always seems like it's being stored on dot three. The second replica always on dot two. Whoop, now we're totally up to date here. Let's zoom back out. You can see we're totally up to date as well on dot two. And if we zoom out in this particular view, you'll see that all three replicas are now available within the New York City data center. Um, we zoom back in and you see that well, okay, they're partitioned between the uh, dot one node, the dot two node, and the dot three node. So what happens if one of these uh, nodes goes down? Yeah, I'm happy you asked that. The 
simulation can show that. And what we have here are three buttons that allow you to toggle the availability of a node. So let's bring down the original node, node one. You can see that there's a big red blinking circle around it now. Um, what this shows is that node one is not available. So the client traffic, the network throughput are both, have both gone to zero. Um, maybe this node's been restarted. Maybe it simply died. Um, but nodes two and three are still active and happy. And you can see that they're counting up. They're already both at 2.7 gigabytes. Uh, node one is still stuck in the past at 2.6 gigabytes. As long as Cockroach has two nodes, it's going to be happy. When node one comes back, it will catch back up. So let's bring it back online. I'll go its availability. Now it's green. Great. So what's going to happen here is it will be getting uh, information transferred to it from nodes two and three to catch it up to where they uh, got to. Uh, so that will happen. You can see they're still at 2.8 and the other ones are at 2.9. It'll get there. Um, now there's one additional thing to show in this simple simulation and that's what happens when two of the nodes go away. So let's do that. Let's take out nodes two and three. Great. So now we have two missing nodes, and you can see that the entire cluster is unfortunately stalled now. Cockroach needs to achieve consensus on its rights. That's how it makes sure that there's consistency. So it needs a majority of nodes available. Very cool. And then what happens when you bring them back online? They will all, the whole cluster will become available again. So, I mean, you know, we can just toggle node three back on to start, and nodes one and three now have um, sort of a peer status. They can reach consensus. They don't care that node two is not back, but uh, the cluster is unstuck, and uh, nothing will have been lost. Um, traditional monolithic database systems like you know Oracle with Golden Gate or an active-active configuration on MySQL or Postgres, um, in, in these particular situations, there's a potential to lose data when these failovers happen. With Cockroach, that's impossible. So let's bring everything back online. Now, oops. now you'll see that uh, node Two will catch up to nodes one and three, um, and this client traffic will progress. So that's really the end of what we can show with this first simulation. I hope you'll join me for the next.